Are you not capable of anything at all? Why did you even refer to this as you made me dinner? Excuse me? I'm tired of eating your spaghetti. You never even put vegetables in it. Do you ever listen to me? I want to eat normal food, not this crap. Yeah, but mom, yesterday you told me that you really liked it. Don't you remember that? You told me that it was delicious, so today I just cooked it to make you happy. Why have you never acknowledged my effort? What are you even talking about? So now I'm the villain? You mean that it's me who has made the family's dinner such a terrible mess? People's preference has changed every single minute. You have to know that. So it's important for you to understand and change the meal each day to provide enough energy for this whole family. More than that, every single month, I even offer you a food allowance of $2,000 so that we may eat well and don't have to worry about food. But look at what you've done with it. You made spaghetti. How ridiculous was that? I'm sorry, Mom. It's just that I thought you liked spaghetti. So I just wanted to make you happy again this time. I didn't think it would come to this. But Mom, I'll make sure this thing will never happen again. Are you kidding me? It's your job as a daughter-in-law to figure it out with the budget I have give you. And well, being a housewife in this wealthy family is the easiest thing ever. You just have to do some tiny chores, make the meals, and that's it. But you can't even do that properly. Even cooking a little meal seems challenging to you. You don't even have to work like Chris. So just tell me, what on earth could you at least do in this house? Or you would prefer to sleep every day and speak against my words instead, you parasite? I can't believe you're even saying this, Mom. What? I let my son marry you to make our life easier, not harder. You're a complete failure as a daughter-in-law and a wife. You can't budge it. You don't listen. Our dinners are garbage. I've been telling you, I want to go to work. I never told you I wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. You really never listen to me, do you? Whatever I say just goes through one ear and out the other. There's no chance you're going to work. I've always said a daughter-in-law's place is in the house taking care of the family. That's your job. I'm not letting you go work and abandon your household responsibilities. I mean, what it's going to look like to everyone. It's going to make me look bad. People talk. You know, what makes you become so obsessed with working like that? Ah, you wanna get rid of the chores. Get rid of me? So your work is just a disguise to cover your scheme, isn't it? You worried about that? Who cares what it looks like? And what do you mean I want to get away with the chores? I have been suffering life like this ever since I came to this family. And I tried like crazy without complaining to satisfy your needs. And now, when I want to earn my own money without depending on you, you say that I'm lazy? What kind of mother-in-law are you? You are beyond ungrateful. I can't believe you're complaining about your mother-in-law, Susie. Being lazy at home, then forcing me to let you go work so that you can escape from doing the household chores? You're a disgrace. I knew it from the very first time when my son asked me to marry you. Is that your real purpose of entering this house, right? To have all of our property and gain a prosperous place in my son's company? Of course not, Mom. I'm grateful that you are providing a good life for me. I'm also not complaining about you, but I just want to gain your recognition. Don't you think that I am doing the best of my effort to make you accept me? I just want you to reconsider it again and change your opinion about me. I don't deserve to be treated this way. So instead of scolding me and insulting me, could you please be gentle to me just a little bit? Gentle? Oh, so now you're saying that I'm brutal to you, right? Or you're implying that I'm an abuser? What are you talking about? You're being unreasonable about this. I'll never have such thoughts about you. You can't judge me based on your prejudice. It's not fair. Uh-huh. Why not? Because you come from a poor family. You live a poor life, so all you want to do is to get as much money as you can to earn your stupid living. Oh, I got it now. Each month, you just cut short a little bit of the food allowance I gave you. And then after a long time, you could eventually save a huge fortune to get away from this family. Is that the intelligent scheme that you're having in mind? Well, you're too easy to guess, young lady. What? Are you kidding me? Are you really thinking about me that way? Then I have no words to say to you. 
It's your son who begged you to accept me. I have no interest in your property. And what have you just talked about? You mean I'm trying to steal your money? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. If I planned to dig from your family, I would never swallow my pride to suffer all of your criticism that you pour on my face. I can't believe it. After years of working, this is all I get. Shut up! I can't take any more of your dumb whining and complaining. It's all dumb whining and complaining. It's all I ever hear. Day in and day out. Who are you calling dumb? I'm talking about you. Who's not listening now? You're a daughter-in-law and you can't even take care of the house properly. If this were a company, I would have fired you a long time ago. You can't survive without my help or salary because you're dumb and lazy. All you ever think of me was chatting and sitting lazily all day. I can't take this anymore. You don't have the right to insult me. You have some nerve calling me dumb and lazy. Of course. You're just a stupid freeloader in this house. I have full right to order you around. But if you want me to stop calling you that, then learn something from me. Stop being so lazy and just shut up and be a good daughter-in-law and a good wife too. My son suffered enough. Otherwise, I'll resort to any way to make your life a nightmare. And then you'll have no choice but to leave this house because I have no use for anyone like that. Especially my daughter-in-law. Got it? I heard about your conversation with mom. I heard you said some things you just could never take back. She's very hurt, you know. What? Are you joking? She's saying that I said hurtful things? She's hurt. Of course you did. The nerve you have saying all those things to her when you're not even doing your part. I heard you called her an abuser. How could you talk to your mother-in-law like that? She's your mother-in-law and she's my mom. Well, yeah, I did tell her that, but not in those exact words. She's bending my words so that you would misunderstand me. What? How dare you say that about my mom? Do you mean she's lying? That's absurd. Yes, you know what? It's unacceptable. Just mark my words. Unlike you, she is trying her best to take care of you and my grandchild. And you do what? You spend your day at home. So obviously, that's not something you say to your mother-in-law. What? This is so ridiculous. You're just the same as your mother. You don't know anything except looking down on and judging others. Now listen here. I don't have a mere thought of arguing with your mom. I'm just asking her if I could go out and work just like you. I want to contribute to this family. I don't want to be a free maid in this house anymore. It's like living in hell here. Well, of course you can't. Just imagining you're gonna work in a company is enough to give me goosebumps. Look at you. All I can see is a lazy and useless wife who is always waiting for me to help with some trivial housework that you can do on your own. Then, if you're lucky to be accepted to work in a company, you'll make me look bad. Don't try to persuade us about that. You'll only throw dirt on our name. That's not a good attitude, Susie. You'd better mind your behavior when you have the honor to live here. Okay, I tell you what. I do the chores all day. Then I take care of our child. And you don't even help me with a single piece of work. I'm not a goddess. I couldn't have the ability to satisfy everyone. You are my husband. You should understand me and even offer to help me to do single stuff. I don't want to marry a naughty boy. I want to marry a true husband. What do you mean? You criticize me? Let me tell you this. If I know this day will come, I will never marry you. Having you here just makes my family feel annoyed and irritated. My mom was right all along about marrying you. You are just an inferior wife. You will never be of help for me. It's easy to see with this background, you will never disturb my family's expectations. What a leech you are. Instead of helping your husband, you just never stop whining and complaining. What's the point of working anyway when you can't even complete your own household chores? Or you think that when you can take over my house and my property, you would become rich immediately without even trying? How intelligent is that scheme? But no way I let you do that. With this money, I could easily find a much better wife than you. Oh my god, Chris! You have changed so much since I first met you. I can't recognize you anymore. Oh, really? And what's that supposed to mean, Susie? 
It means that the person I fell in love with was kind, supportive, and understanding. But now, all I see is resentment and disdain. I can't help but feel like I no longer know who you are. Well, maybe if you hadn't been such a burden to my family, things would be different. You act like you've suffered so much, but what about the sacrifices my family made for you? Sacrifices? Is that what you call it? I never asked for anyone to sacrifice anything for me. I have endured so much pain from your family without complaining a single word. I have served like a slave, trying my best to satisfy the needs of this family. And yet, all I get in return is to be looked down upon, treated as if I'm some kind of parasite. Well, well, well. Lucas decided to speak up. So you think you're the only one who suffered? Please, spare me the melodrama. I've endured your incessant nagging and endless demands far for too long. It's like I'm constantly walking on eggshells trying to please you. And what do I get in return? Nothing but criticism and belittlement. It's not a competition, Chris. I never said I suffered more than you. This is about the lack of respect and appreciation in our relationship. Instead of recognizing the efforts I put in, you throw them back at me like they're nothing. We're supposed to be partners, supporting and understanding each other. But all I feel is your constant resentment and hostility. Maybe if you had been a better wife, I wouldn't be so resentful. It's not like you've ever met my expectations anyway. You've consistently let me down time and time again. Expectations? Seriously, Chris? Is that what this is all about? Your unrealistic expectations that no one could possibly live up to? I'm exhausted from constantly trying to please you only to feel like I'm never good enough. Well, I don't give a damn about your excuses. Now get off your lazy behind and do what you're supposed to do. Sweep the entire house, clean every nook and cranny off the floor. And you better do it right now or you'll have to pay the consequences. Oh really? Is that your brilliant solution? Ordering me around like some kind of servant? I won't be treated like that, Chris. I deserve respect and dignity in this relationship. If you think treating me like a maid will solve our problems, you're sorely mistaken. Fine, have it your way then. Keep living in your delusional world where you think you're entitled to everything without lifting a finger. But mark my words, there will be consequences if you don't comply. Don't say I didn't warn you. Susie, where are you? <sighs> you can't just stop making me irritated. Susie! What the hell are you actually doing right now? Well, I guess you're hiding elsewhere so that you could sit idly and enjoy your life and leave me here stuck with the housework. It's your evil plan, isn't it? I can't believe it. This house looks like a dumpster. It's disgusting. If you still want to keep your life, you'd better come home and do your chores now. What are you even saying, Mom? Well, you can't be rational for just one time, can you? How brutal are you? Even after hurting others, you can't still order them around. What are you actually talking about? I'm tired of your stupid nonsense. Just spit it out. You really don't remember, or you're just pretending not to remember. Yesterday, you pressed your iron on my back when I was ironing clothes for Chris. Now I'm in the hospital. How could you do such a thing to your daughter-in-law? Oh yeah, that's right. I remember. I did that thing, but it was just a mistake. You can't accuse me of such a trivial thing like that. Look, Susie, I may have accidentally pressed the iron on your back, but it was a genuine mistake. I had no intention of causing you harm, and it certainly wasn't some deliberate act of malice. Accidents happen every time, and you can't avoid them. Trivial? You call it trivial? I ended up in the hospital because of that trivial incident. Don't ever tell me such lies. Yesterday, when I was ironing clothes, you just broke in and said that I stole your purse. Then, when I was trying to explain, you just seized the scorching iron from my hand and immediately pressed it on my back. I've been in pain and discomfort, and it's affected my ability to perform daily tasks. You need to understand the seriousness of what happened and take responsibility for your actions, Mom. You can't deny your fault like that. What? What do you mean? Are you blaming your mother-in-law? Oh... Spare me the dramatics. Are you seriously going to blame your poor, innocent mother-in-law for everything? How convenient, Susie. It's always so easy to pin the blame on someone else, isn't it? Well, 
I refuse to be your scapegoat. And you know what? If I didn't make that on purpose, then it serves you just right. I warned you in advance. If you don't perform your good job as an obedient daughter-in-law, I'll have to punish you so that you can learn your valuable lesson and know how to behave well here. You're out of your mind. All of your accusations were all irrational. You didn't even have enough evidence to catch me, but you still jumped to conclusions to torture me. You're not my mother-in-law. You're a monster. I said it again. I did not steal your purse. Oh, well, about that. I forgot my purse in my drawer, but it does not say anything about you not being a thief. It's just that I still haven't found out your second crooked face yet. <laughs> You're still a secret thief to me. You're gradually drawing plans to take over our fortune, but I won't let you succeed with your scheme. What? What have you just said? You forgot your purse? I can't believe it. Who am I to you? A despicable thief? You can't blame me without thinking like that. I entered this house to be your daughter-in-law, not your free maid. I don't deserve every bad thing you've done. I've had enough of this house. You just want to kick me out of this house as soon as possible, right? Then fine, just give me the divorce paper. I'll sign it as the last good thing I could do for this house. Aw, really? Oh my gosh, Susie, you've done us a favor. That's good news you understand how your husband and I feel all this time. We've discussed this already and came up with a divorce petition a couple of days ago waiting for you to sign your name. And don't worry about Chris. After signing the paper, he then told me to give it to you. You know, he's completely counting on me to process this divorce. You've made the right decision this time. Oh, one more thing. I'll tell him to pay for your treatment at the hospital so that you don't have to worry about financial problems. <laughs> I didn't know you could be that nice, but thanks. I don't need your help. Thank you for saving my life, Mrs. Vivian. Finally, I could be free, but I tell you what, I won't give up that easily. I'll come back as your worst nightmare. Susie, Susie, what the hell are you doing? I have been calling you since this morning. Are you trying to neglect my calls? How dare you do that to your mother-in-law? Just answer your phone, or else I'll make you pay for this. Ugh, come on. Don't be that hasty. Don't you know that you're ruining my beautiful day? Okay, old lady. First, you're not my mother-in-law. We cut ties just a couple of days ago, remember? Second, I don't have the responsibility to obey you. I can answer the phone whenever I feel like it. Anyway, what was it you're urging to tell me? Please be quick, because I'm so busy with my work these days. How dare you ruin my son's business? Was it you who accused him of evading tax? He's at the police station now for interrogating! Oh really? He's at the police now? What a relief! This means that all of my efforts paid off! <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't understand! Well, just use your brain for once. Of course it's me. I'm behind all of this. Well, at first, I didn't figure out his evil actions. Till one day, I noticed that there was this call from a very strange number. Right after looking at the number, he just immediately grasped the phone and went outside to answer. It was so weird that I even thought it was a secret mistress. But things turned out to be much more serious than I thought. During the call, I overheard that he's discussing his plan to evade taxes with his assistant. And actually, they have done this successfully a lot of times, which is disgusting. Fortunately, I brought my phone along so I could secretly record their whole conversation. Every single word. So it was you all along, wasn't it? You planned to harm us. How could you do that to your family? Who says that you're my family? We cut ties. Ugh, why did you just go on with your nonsense lesson about family like that? I'm sick of hearing it when living in your house. You think that just with the word family, you can successfully manipulate me and make me listen to all of your orders? Well, not again, Mrs. Vivian. I'm not that weak little Susie you used to know. I'm just executing justice. And it's not just me. The police were also involved in this because I gave all of my evidence, including recordings and secret documents he hid on this computer, to them. 
and let them do the rest. It's easy to get these documents, as he would never be suspicious of me, a housewife, to do such things to him. And wow, they preceded these papers quite fast, didn't they? Well, it won't be long until that day, the day he will have to pay me back everything. Susie, I can't believe what I'm hearing. How can you say such hurtful things? We may have had our disagreements and conflicts, but it's over now. Please, could you help me rescue him? He's innocent. You couldn't do such things to your ex-husband, right? What are you blabbering about? Is Chris innocent? Huh, he's the most terrible husband I've ever known. He never loved me. He cared about no one but himself. Even when I was hurting the most, he chose not to be there for me. He escaped from me. He didn't want to be with a woman like me. So why do I have to be merciful to him? What about me? Don't I deserve the sweetness of revenge? Thinking of what you have done to me makes me want to kill all of you. If you could see the wound in my back, the result of you pressing the iron on me, then you would understand my feelings. It's just desperate. At that time, I thought I wouldn't be able to handle it any longer, but I did it. Yes, and today I'm back and repay it all to you. Anyway, what goes around comes around, they say. No, Susie, you can treat us like this. I'm so sorry for what I have done. No, we have done to you and your life. At that time, I couldn't control my feelings, so I just acted without thinking. I apologize to you now. So could you please spare us some mercy and tell the police that the police was fake? If you don't do that, we'll have to bear a huge debt, and Chris will even have to face his future life in prison. You won't want that to happen, will you? Could you please do that to save your husband's life? I mean, our lives. I know you would do that, right, my daughter? Ugh, stop it. You just know how to make me furious, don't you? I'm not your daughter and I never want to be your daughter. Well, according to the seriousness of this crime, he would very likely receive an imprisonment. <laughs> Till that day comes, I'll be right here, waiting patiently. It makes me happy to think of that day, the day all of your lives went miserable. Then, you'll have to crawl under my leg for my precious money. <laughs> Oops, I gotta go now. Enjoy the rest of your wonderful life before it's gone. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Tell Chris I say hi, and wish him have a lot of fun in prison for me, okay? It's all for now. Bye-bye, Mrs. Susie. Don't call me again, or I'll throw you in there to live with your stupid son. Got it? No, you couldn't treat us like this. Please, forgive us. We'll do anything. I don't want to live like this. It can't be like this. Susie! Susie! After that, I immediately blocked Mrs. Vivian's number and didn't reply to any of the messages her family sent me. Chris was sentenced to imprisonment for his serious crime. He and Mrs. Vivian then had to sell their house and all of their property to pay for their enormous debt, but it wasn't enough, of course. Their company also collapsed after the scandal, without any hope of thriving. After that, they had to go out and work their asses off to make ends meet. I heard from some of my relatives that they were working really hard at a small food stall with a really low wage. However, their salary was too low to afford a rented house, so they had no choice but to live out on the street. I feel sad sometimes when I think about them, but it's their karma. If they treated me like one of their family members, I would not have resorted to this. About me, I'm now living with my parents, who are the only ones that cared about me when I was at the hospital, suffering my killing pain. I am grateful to them, and I have even made a vow that I'll do anything to protect my family, whatever happens to it. 